Thank you. Awesome. This is my beautiful wife, Melissa. We've been married 17 years this weekend, and uh, it's good. Um, yeah, and we have four children. Uh, the marriage has been fruitful. Come on, somebody. Um, that's David, uh, the eldest that's standing next to me, and then Judah, the second eldest next to Melissa. Faith is the only girl. Come on, somebody. Uh, and, uh, and then the baby uh, is, jo what's his name? Joseph. Um, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> you know, when you have four kids, you start to name them one, two, three, and four. <laughs> um, and we are so blessed to be here. Um, George, Leanne, thank you so much for your friendship. Number one, I mean, uh, today in ministry, we often become competitors and we compete and we compare, but I love our friendship. Thank you so much. Um, we don't, I don't often get to hang out with you, but we, we have hanged out like once, you know, like once, you know, when you made time for me. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, but George and I just communicate often and it's just such a good, good to have friends that we can call friends really and just want to hang out with and, and your hospitality, your generosity, just opening it up for us and allowing us to be here in Durban. We thank you so much. Can you give it up for your leaders? They're amazing and uh, really, really appreciate you. And to your Harvest Church, fantastic. It is so good to be with you this morning. And uh, if you don't mind uh, turning with me in your Bible, uh, wherever you feel the Lord leads you. Um, no, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. <laughs> Turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11, I'm going to read from verse 31 uh, to verse 32. Because in Genesis eleven thirty-one 31 to verse 32, sandwiched between the great biblical biographies of Noah and Abraham, we find the very short and very sad story of a man named Terah. Terah was the father of Abram. Now, the story of, 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 of Terah is this. It is, a, it is a story of a man with intention, but did not deliver on his intention. Um, don't look at your husband right now when he said he was going to cut the, the, the grass, uh, and he didn't cut the grass. So just don't, don't do that. We want to make sure marriages stay healthy this December. Come on, somebody. Um, uh, the story of Terah is, this, is, the, is the story of a man with a vision but did not go all the way. It is the story of a man with a plan but settled out of place. He settled along the way but didn't quite get to where he wanted to. Some things got along the journey. Uh, some things didn't go according to plan. Um, somehow he took his eye off the prize. Uh, you know, biblical scholars are still trying to figure out what exactly happened, why he didn't go to the place that he originally intended to go to. But we all know life can happen. Um, we've lived through some very interesting times in our own uh, lives, and we've been through some challenges, and we've seen things, and there are many things that would suggest to us to rather stop halfway as opposed to going all the way, going to the place and to the destination that we've intended to go to. Uh, sometimes it is uh, disappointment. Sometimes it is, uh, uh, it is unfulfilled dreams, things that we thought should have happened that didn't happen. Um, and so as a result of those things, we don't end up doing what we were supposed to or what we wanted to or what we prayed or believed for, and we settle half way to the destination. Genesis 11, 32 say, or 31 says this, Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, and his daughter-in-law Sarah, his son, his son Abram's wife, and they set out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he didn't die he didn't die in Canaan. He didn't die in the place of his vision. He didn't die in the place of his purpose. He didn't die in the place of where he intended to go, but he, he died in the place along the way. He settled out of the place of his destination, the place of his promise, and he, and he settled there. And I simply entitled my message this morning, my message title is, Greater Things Ahead. Would you say it with me? Greater Things things ahead. Come on somebody, one more time. Greater things ahead. Turn to your neighbor, the one that's looking so important and doesn't want to talk to you, and say, neighbor, I know you don't want to talk to me, but just because this black preacher asked me to talk to you, just for his sake, neighbor, there's greater things ahead. 
I believe today prophetically by the word and by the design of God that no matter where you've been and no matter what you've done and no matter what you've been through, I serve a God who is able to do far above what we can ask, imagine, or think of. I serve a God who is able to turn your mourning into dancing, your sorrow into joy. Maybe, just maybe this year hasn't been a great year, but we serve a great God. Come on, somebody, that God is able to take you to where he wants to go. I believe there are greater things ahead. You know, when the Lord spoke to me about this, uh, I, I, I was, it was at the start of, uh, uh, in 2020, just before the lockdown. Uh, in fact, the lockdown had just happened, and, and a few days before, the Lord spoke to me, and, he, and there was a song singing, and I, and I was declaring the greatness of God. I was declaring how good God is. How many of you know it's one thing to declare God when things are good, that He is great, but when things are not so good, it's harder to declare that great is the Lord and worthy to be praised. And I, and, I, and I declared this to the Lord. I sang the song, um, and this, it was in my spirit that greater things are lying ahead. Three days later, we were doing a feeding scheme at our church. Uh, we call it the pantry. We opened up our pantry because lockdown had happened. The church wasn't allowed to worship. And as I opened up the, the church's doors uh, the Saturday morning, people were starting to line up. They were snaking around the building, and there were so many people coming for food relief, children, moms and dads coming to get food from the church. And, and we thought, man, this is what we are called to do, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, loving on God's people. And as we're loving on the people, giving them grocery bags that would last them for two weeks with all the essentials in it. We had hundreds of people lining up and, 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 and while this was happening, the police started arriving at the church, looking at the church and they came in and said, why is the church open? We said, listen, the church is not open but our food relief is open. We're looking after the community. We're loving on the community and they said, but you can't be open. I said, but yes, we can be open. We have to be the church. We can't preach. We're not doing music but we can feed the poor and, they, and more police vans arrived and they looked at the place and they thought and they said to me, why is the church open? I said the same thing. Listen, we have our official documents. We're not, allowed, we're not open. We're not doing worship. I took them into the auditorium. I showed them that all the chairs were stacked up, that there was nobody singing songs. There was no silent preacher in the back, like, you know, doing, doing a sermon. There was nothing happening. And yet they kept coming. And the more police came and they said, listen, you've got to shut this down. You can't feed the people. I said, we cannot shut this down. We are the church. We must feed the poor. We must take care of the widow. We must take care of the orphan. And so we can't be shut down. They said, listen, if you're not going to shut down, we're going to arrest you. The brigadier walks in with more police. It looked like a Hollywood scene, uh, something that you see on TV. There were police. You thought, you, I actually thought that crime had happened. There, there were so many police cars there. And as they walked in, the police brigadier walked in. He didn't want to ask any questions. I had my paper. I had everything. He said, he told his guys, arrest this pastor right now. They arrested me, and they frog marched me to the back of the police vehicle, threw me at the back. I couldn't believe what was happening. And they locked the door, and they drove me to poli the police station. I got to the police station, and I thought, it was a joke until they opened up the the, 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 the the holding cell doors. You know when they bring out those big keys? <laughs> and I thought, Jesus, be the center of it all. <laughs> and I knew it wasn't a joke as they let me in and they locked the door behind me. They took my cell phone. They took everything. And they were getting ready to process me in this facility before they put me into the holding cell. One of the policemen said, Pastor, we are not happy that you are here. We don't want you here. You are, did, you've done a good thing, but we are going to see how we can get you out of here. We're not going to allow you to stay in our prison. We're not going to allow you to eat our food. We're not going to allow you to sleep with our blankets because that will not be good for you. I said, thank you, Jesus. And uh, they kept me out there for about five hours while they were fighting with their brigadier trying to figure out how to get me released. They took mug shots of me. They put my fingerprints in. They opened up a case against me. And I said to them, listen, you better figure out what to do because I'm going to, if you release me in a few hours time, I'm going to go back to the same church you closed because I'm going to feed the same people because God has not called us to be accountable church. But how many of you know three days earlier when I shouted greater things ahead, little did I know I would be in a prison cell a few days later. But still, regardless of your circumstances, Circumstance, regardless of your situation, the goodness of God, He is still good and He is still able to do what He says He would do. And so ultimately you need to understand whatever you are going through is not what you are going to. 
If you're making notes, you need to write that down. Whatever you are going through, it is just your go through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it is just the shadow of the valley. Because I want to let you know whether we live on this side of eternity or whether we live on the other side of eternity, we still win because we are with Christ and He is able. Come on, somebody. We are going to go through because I believe that God is able to get you through your greatest storm. And there are some people fighting some storms today. Can I? I encourage you by the word of God. You are going to get through it and you are not going to stay. Don't make a a permanent residence in your go through because you are not meant to stay in your go through. You are meant to go to the place where God has called you to. And if God has not gotten you there yet, then he is not done yet. Come on, somebody. Can I have some harvest people who love Jesus from the back to the front, from the left to the right? Would you jump up out of your chair and give God a shout of praise all over this place. Your God is faithful. Your God is able. Your God can do what he says he will do. He is not like a man that he should change his mind or go back on his word. That God is faithful. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness, God. Come on, just for a few moments, worship him. Just for a few moments, tell him how great he is. The fact that you are alive, the fact that you have breath in your body, the fact that you still love your husband and you still love your wife, the fact that that maybe you don't have everything you wanted, but God has been good to you. Maybe just maybe some things have fallen to pieces and it seemed like your world have come to an end, but you still have breath in your lungs today to declare the goodness of God over your future over your children, over your children's children, over your business. Come on, over your church community. He is good and his love endures forever in Jesus' mighty name. We serve a good God. Hallelujah. Somebody is saying that with tears running down their eyes because their circumstances don't look good. But God is still good today. He is still able today to heal every broken heart and to bring you to the knowledge of His love and grace today. He is a good God. There are greater things ahead. Maybe just maybe things have fallen apart and you don't have reason to believe that there is something in your future. Can I declare to you that God has gone ahead of you. He has already made a way for you and he will already open up doors for you in Jesus mighty name hallelujah you may be seated you're making me nervous too many white people standing up looking at me are you guys starting to toy toy (laughs) hallelujah hallelujah yeah I want to let you know your go through is not your go to far too many people settle out of place Far too many people give up when the go through doesn't look the way they thought it should. But it's just your go through. Nobody goes and lives at McDonald's drive through. Sometimes we feel like we're living there. It's supposed to be quick. <laughs> and you're like standing there and you're like, ah, Moss, I might have, met, I might have, have gone inside, Moss. You know, because you're standing there and they don't have anything that you need. But your go-through is not your destination. You see, your go-to speaks of your destination. And your go-through speaks of your journey. And don't confuse the two. Don't get confused between your journey and your destination. Ah, too many people get lost in their journey. Lose sight of their destination. Lose sight of their promise. The thing that God whispered to you when nobody was around. Now you begin to question it when everybody is around. Because some people are saying, is it even possible? Will you even make it? That could never happen. Are you, are you, are you sure? And instead of sticking with the God plan, you get with the man plan. And you settle short of what God has for you. Sometimes the things that sound reasonable are not things that are filled with faith. And sometimes the things that are unreasonable are things that are, that, are, that are filled with faith that can get you to where you need to go. And you've got to make up your mind along this journey of your life. Whose report shall you believe? The journey may be rough. And the journey may have some delays. 
but you still have a destination to get to. It was December of 19, it was December of 2018. I had this amazing plan. I'd worked hard for the whole year. I decided what me and my family needed was a 3,000 kilometer road trip with four children and a wife. Can I get an amen? I know what you're thinking. What a man of faith. Yeah. Some of you are know what a stupid man. <laughs> I decided this is what the plan was. It was a simple plan. This is going to be therapeutic relief for me. I'm going to sit behind the steering wheel. I'm going to look into a road. And I'm just going to be in my own bubble forgetting I've got four children and a wife. I would go from Cape Town to Olifanzuk where I grew up. 960 kilometers in the northern Cape. 10 hours drive. I will drive from Olifanzuk once we've settled and said hi to everybody. I stayed a couple of days. We will drive from Olifanzuk to Johannesburg. Another 630 kilometers. Seven hours drive. And then I would take... I would undertake the daunting task of driving from Johannesburg to Cape Town, 1,400 kilometers, 14 hours drive, a total of about 3,000 kilometers, give or take, which amounted to about 31 hours worth of driving with four kids. Let that sink in. <laughs> Let it just sink in. Let it sink in. I don't have money for counseling. You are my support group right now. <laughs> you can pray for me. <laughs> and if I had... A Ford Cayenne, it would have been wonderful. But I had a Uno. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> and we undertook this journey, and I want to let you know, this journey, we had a destination for each leg of the journey. But along the journey, we were agitated. We were frustrated. Kids saying, are we there yet? We were sweaty, and we had, were cramped up. We were bored, and we were beyond over it. A hundred times. But the promise of what laid ahead was encouraging and exciting. While doing the road trip, there were many signs along the way. There were yield signs, picnic signs, speed limit signs, no overtaking signs, even, do, even high, high, hijacking signs. Don't park here because they're going to hijack you signs. But none of those signs were as important as the how far to your destination. It was the sign I would look for every point along the journey because it was that sign that had my attention because the longer I drove, the, the longer I needed to look at a sign that would build faith in my heart that I was getting closer to my destination. In fact, my kids would sleep and they were asking how long still we arrived. But what kept them enduring was the destination ahead. Sometimes we encounter disruptions along the journey of life. Maybe a flat a tire, a car runs out of fuel, we hit some potholes, we have some roadblocks, but the reality is there is still a destination in mind. These things can disrupt your momentum or your speed and your time, but they cannot disrupt your destiny. Your destiny still lies ahead of you. And the reality is you have to believe that if God has set you on this journey, he will get you to where you need to go. The devil is a liar. Maybe some of you this year, 2022, had some blowouts of tires and seemed like you were not going to make it. It seemed like the thing that you were believing God for hit a speed bump and there were some potholes along the way. But look at you now. You are still here today because God still has a plan for your life. He says, I know the plans I have for you to prosper you and not to harm you. Come on, you can tell the devil to go to hell because God has got a plan for you. If you believe it, give God a shout of praise in this place. A delay to you is not a delay to heaven. Come on. A delay to you is not a delay to heaven. 
A disappointment to you is not a disappointment to heaven. God says, I will work all things together. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, I will work it together. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes you have to use the ingredients that are so bitter. Sometimes you have to use the ingredients that don't taste good. But if you mix them together, you can get a beautiful cake out of it. And for some of you, you might not feel like things are coming together because you are only tasting the butter right now. And you might not understand why it is that the egg is not so good on its own. But allow for God to take your pain on this journey. Allow Him to take all the ingredients and mix it together so that after it's all being said and done, people can come and taste and see that the Lord is good. That you were not twisted by your circumstance. That you were not twisted by your situation. Oh, come on. I feel like there are some people in this room who's got to get a little bit on side about what God has ahead for you. You have made it so far and you are going to make it all the way because there's greater things ahead. Come on, somebody. High five two or three people. Tell them there are greater things ahead for me. Hallelujah. And you're wondering why did they get the black spitting preacher to come to you today? They got us here to wake you up so that you can't sleep on Sunday. Come on, somebody. I've come to remind you that you serve a God who 2 Peter 3 verse 8 says, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day to God. I've come to remind you that you, even for some of you in this room today who feels like you are out of time, come on, you can never be out of time when God is over time. When God is not limited by time, your limitation is not God's limitation. He can do in a moment what can take a lifetime to do. Come on, somebody, can somebody get happy about your breakthrough in in this place can somebody get happy that in the twinkle of an eye God can shift your life around I was telling the first service how one morning I woke up and I had for eight years been telling our congregation back in Cape Town the land that we had purchased was going to transfer onto our name and it took eight years to transfer it onto our name and in the middle of that eight years or, or somewhere along the line I I I had forgotten that I needed money once the property was, 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 was on our name that I would need money to build. On the 1st of September, the, fi the property finally transferred onto our name and I didn't have money. <laughs> it was funny. I got cold shivers and my heart started beating and I realized I told these beautiful people of God that we are going to have a building but I had no money. And I would tell them every Sunday, come on church, we're going to build a great building. We're just waiting for the land to transfer. When some finally the land transferred, I needed 60 million rand. And to start the process, I needed to have 20 million rand that I had to raise locally before I could get any other funding from anywhere else to bring us up to the 60 million rand. And the only place I could go, because you know how you congregation members are, when us pastors get up on the stage and you say, oh, they just want money. Oh, just want money. I got in front of the congregation. I said, listen, we need, we need this. We need money. And uh, God had given me a promise, remember, that there are greater things ahead. And we finally got the thing uh, on our name and no bank would touch us. Our own bank wouldn't even look at us. Standard Bank said, ask I'm sorry. And that bank said, no, we don't touch you. We don't touch churches. And I thought, God, what am I going to do? But because God has a promise that we're not going to die halfway. We're not going to go halfway. The Bible says in Philippians 1 verse 6, he who began a good work. Come on, somebody. He is faithful to complete that good work. God doesn't do a half job. He will do a complete job. And so I called on the promise. He said, I gave you this land 50 years ago. I reserved this land for you. You will put a building on this land. I took that promise. I said, there's greater things ahead for us as a community and as a church. And, and I put it out to the church. I said, if you know of any organization who might know, um, who, who can help with building churches, that type of thing, let me know. One gentleman sent me a message. He said, try this organization. I heard that they help churches. I called the organization. A lady picked up the phone. I don't know. If she had a bad day, or if she's just heard from too many churches that day, maybe I was 500 num num number 96 church that called her that day. 
She picked up the phone. I explained to her my story. She said, listen, we used to help churches. We don't help them anymore. Please don't call me back again. Boop. She put the phone down. I thought, wow, that went pretty good. Let's try again. <laughs> Three weeks would go by. I'm at church doing a feeding program with one of the organizations. And one of the congregation members is busy talking to, uh, to a gentleman that I've never met before. She calls me over, introduces me to the gentleman, tells me his name and surname. It rang a bell in my, in my mind, and it was the same company I called three weeks ago. I laughed as I, as I greeted the guy, and I asked him, are you connected with this company? He said, yes. He says, I'm the owner. I said, oh, yeah, I called you guys, but your secretary wasn't very interested in talking to me. He said, what did you want? I said, I only wanted $20 million. <laughs> He said to me, for what? I said, I want to build a building. I've got land, but I need, I need to build a building. He said, yeah, we used to do that, but we don't do it anymore. He looked at me, and he said, but there's something about you. I don't know what it was. I think it was my teeth. He liked my teeth. <laughs> Strong and big. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be back in a week. Come and show me where the land is in a week's time. He comes, a week goes by, he comes, he picks me up, takes me to the land, looks at the land, looks at Table Mountain, looks at the land, looks at Table Mountain. He says, Pastor, let us pray. For three minutes we pray. He said, I feel in my heart the Lord would have me help you build a building on this land. He says, give me a week. I'm not going to give you any bank. I'm going to give you the banks that I've got great relationships with. And once it's sealed, I will call you. A week later, he says, Pastor, have you got a suit? I said, yes, I didn't have one. Um, but I had, I had a, a jacket and I had a tie. He said, put on your jacket and your tie. Go meet these guys. I've already set it up for you. Went back there, cut a long story short. These guys, I said to them, listen, I need 20 million. They said, no, we can't give you 20 million. You're a church. I said, but I need 20 million. You don't understand. They said, 20 million is too much. We've never done any, any business with a church, and there is no way they'll give you 20 million. 15 million, maybe. 20 million, never. I said, look, go try. Tell them I need 20 million. They go to the credit committee. Three long months go by. He calls me back. He said, you are a man of faith. He said, unanimously, the credit committee for the first time in their history working with the church they've never worked with any other church we will be the first church they've ever worked with made a unanimous decision to give us 20 million rand to build our church come on somebody because i believe there are greater things ahead that what man says is impossible is possible with God. How your 2022 looks is different to what your 2023 may look like. Because God has already gone ahead to bring you the victory. Because you serve a God who, according to Psalm 50 verse 10 says, For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own a cattle on a thousand hills. Hebrews chapter 12, your God says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. There is a joy said before if you will only press on, if you will keep believing that there are still greater things ahead for you, that the things that are behind you are behind you, but what lies ahead of you is still greater in Jesus' mighty name. I declare over you this morning, Harvest Church, that the pain of yesterday will not be the limitation of your tomorrow. I declare that the disappointments of people and things that if you have gone through will not hinder you from becoming everything that God has called you to become. That yesterday's relationships will not hold you back from tomorrow's relationships. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that those business deals that didn't work out this year will not be a limitation for you to dream again. That God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing and favor over your business again. Come on somebody, I prophesy over some of those dead dreams that people have buried and thought I'm trying to hide my myself from pain. I don't want to I don't want to trust again. I pray that those dreams will come back to life again in the name of Jesus. Come on. If you believe it, if you are saying I'm believing for God to do a miracle in my future. I'm believing for God to open up doors that no man can shut. All over this room I come into agreement with those dreams. I come into agreement with those with those prayers that you have in Jesus mighty name. In fact, wherever you are, if that is you and you are believing for a 
breakthrough. Would you stand to your feet all over this place? Maybe, just maybe, you are, you are standing in a place of hardship and you don't know how this thing is going to break. Come on, I prophesy. I declare as the band comes up, I declare over you in Jesus' mighty name, God. Come on, open up your mouth because you know how to pray. You can pray and ask the Lord for a breakthrough today. Oh, maybe you've been praying for a long time and nothing has happened. Maybe you've even given up believing that this is never going to happen. Maybe just try one more time. Go again this morning and believe God. Petition heaven for a miracle. Say, God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in this day because we know you are a God who is faithful and you stay true to your word. Oh, come on, somebody, in Jesus' name. You know, there's a song that I, that I sang in the first service, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because he lives, uh, all fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know he holds the future. Our God is a God who is faithful. He's faithful to his promise. Hallelujah. Oh, because he lives, I can fail tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Oh, oh. because I know, yes, I, I know he holds the future. And life, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Sing, oh, because he lives, because I can face, I can face tomorrow. Oh. Because he lives, all oh, fear is gone, all oh, fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know, he holds the future. worship you Jesus we give you all the praise every fear must bow its knee come up against every fear over your mind fear of the future fear of death in this place fear of not having enough fear of people's opinions I come against it the Bible declares perfect love casts out fear there is no fear in love. Fear has to do with punishment, but your God loves you. His grace is sufficient for you today. And maybe you're carrying, a, you're carrying some burdens and you're going uphill. And it seems like you're never going to get there. May the grace of God be upon you today. May He overwhelm you and may He overshadow you. May His goodness and His mercy surround you now and forever may God be with you in sickness and in health may he bring healing to your mortal body and his grace will enable you to run faster climb higher dream bigger that his grace would carry you through your darkest night because He is faithful to His promise. He will not leave you, nor will He forsake you. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor, Jesus. Because there is nobody like you. Hallelujah.
Come on, just worship Him. In your own words, in your own language, just thank Him for all that He has done. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, God. Hallelujah. Share Ah, that's right. That's right. From within rivers of living water. Let it flow. Let it flow through you. Harvest Church. May he turn your mourning into dancing. For some of you, the night has been so long. The Bible says the weeping endures all night. Joy comes in the morning. And your night has been so long. And it seems like, God, where are you? Will I ever make it through the night? I've come to declare that God says he's able. That your morning is today. That your morning has come today. He's going to turn your morning into dancing today. In Jesus' name. Ha, hallelujah. I speak over you. I speak grace over you. I speak favor over you. I speak long life over you. I speak protection over you. I speak the name of Jesus over you. That he will shield you. That he will surround you. That he will impart to you a greater measure of his grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, may you experience the joy of the Lord like never before. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe in you, God. I believe in you. And there is no one like you. No one like you, God. Nobody can heal us the way you do. Shela babo saya baba. Kela la baba ya raba ya nororobo ya se ya raba. Come on, if you've got physical, if you need physical healing right now, I pray that you would lay hands on yourself right now. If there are people next to you that know that you are going through something, maybe your husband, your wife, or family member, if they could just lay hands on you. And, and right now we pray that the prayer, that the, that the, the prayer of the righteous, the Bible says, availeth much. And, and right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray healing into every sick body, God. I pray healing into every scoliosis, arthritis, and diabetes. I take authority over every, over every condition right now. I pray for every cancer to shrivel up and die in the name of Jesus. I command the healing power of God to come over you. I pray in Jesus' name, every high cholesterol. I pray the cholesterol will be healed in Jesus' name. I pray that there will be a supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit for you to find the healing palm of Gilead today and that you will be made well. I pray for every skin condition to be healed. I pray for every lower back disorder to be healed right now. Oh, I declare in Jesus' name, every blood disorder. I declare over that blood that it will be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name, may the healing balm of Gilead be present to heal the sick and to recover from all sickness. There are greater days ahead. You are not going to live. You are not going to die. You are going to live. And until God has declared it, you will live to see His glory. You will live to see His breakthrough and His miracles in Jesus' name. I speak over you a new day. I speak over you a new life. Hallelujah. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. Oh, how great. How great thou art, dance in my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great.
then sings and sings that Savior God to Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise for your breakthrough. Give him praise for your miracle. Give him praise. Give him praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shekalamandorororobo. You are worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy, God. Oh, we love you, God. Where would we be without you, Jesus? You've been so faithful. There are some people in this room this morning. And you felt like giving up. You felt like it's been so difficult. But thank God you got to walk into this room today that God would speak into your heart. Live, breathe, live again. Don't give up. Don't give up in your mind. Don't give up in your heart. Don't give up in your faith. Hold on to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. is able he is able there are some people in this room today oh if you were to tell people around you what you've been through they would not even believe it and so often the enemy is whispered in your ear but today we silence the voice of the enemy hear the word of God Hear the word of God. I pray healing over marriages this morning. Marriages that are taking strain, financial strain, and, and all kinds of strain that has come into your marriage. And I pray by the power of Jesus that healing will come to those marriages in this room. That here at Harvest we will hear testimonies of how God has built marriages that will impact nations in the name of Jesus. God honoring, God affirming, nation changing marriages that will give birth to life, giving marriages all over. In Jesus' mighty name, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you guys do it this way, but uh, I just sense, I just sense we need to just, if, you, if, you, if you're a visitor, please don't feel, you don't have to do any of this, but if you're a harvester, you've been in the Harvest Church for a long time, you would understand the ministering to one another is not something foreign. It's what we do. Would you turn to a neighbor that you feel comfortable with? Or, and would you, just, would you just speak life over that person? Would you just pray with them for a moment? If you came with your family, it makes it even easier. But just take this next few moments as I sense Holy Spirit. There is going to be an impartation of grace, and an impartation of, of faith, an impartation of encouragement. Because oftentimes in church, we go through difficult times. And as we come to the end of the year, we're going to celebrate this festive season with family. Minister to one another. Minister love. Minister courage. Minister faith. Minister healing to one another. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You are holy, 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 holy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, right now, right now, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, do what only you can do, Lord. Go where only you can go. Release the measure the fullness of your presence over each and every single one of your children in this room today. Oh God, we give you praise. so worthy Jesus for those of you in this room that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior if you've ever if you've never given your life to Jesus please speak to somebody please don't leave this room without making your life right with God maybe you once did give your life to Jesus or you but you walked away from him, but you want to come back. Speak to somebody. Maybe you're in this room today and, and you're not certain of your eternal salvation. Come to Jesus. Speak to somebody. There are leaders. There are people who love you in this church and they want to walk a journey with you. But please don't leave this room without talking to somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We magnify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Great is your name and greatly to be praised. Woo. Yes, yes, you will lack no good thing. Grace upon grace, healing upon healing, miracle upon miracle. Jesus mighty name we thank you Lord we thank you Jesus can we give God all the praise can we give him some praise in this place he's wonderful, he's awesome, he's amazing he's powerful, it's only him Just for the note takers, I just want to give you this quickly and then I'm going to, I'm going to hand over. Number one, know the signs to look out for along the journey, Philippians 3, 13. Number two, the joy before you produces the strength within you, Nehemiah 8, verse 10. And number three, know the destination. Don't get comfortable where you are at, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3.